Okay, hello. My name is Steve Ryan. I'm one of the instructors at the Quincy Art Center. I teach uh, ceramics. Today I want to give you a demonstration of uh, a poly technique that's called Alpara. It's a 12th century Eastern European technique for sealing pottery. The pottery of the Middle Ages was a very porous, low fire type of ware, which the porous surface allows bacteria to grow. So they needed some method to seal it so they could try to cook on it. So what they did is they developed this Alvaro mixture. It's like Raku. Actually, this is called Baltic Raku, uh, where we'll pull the pot out of the, the kiln while it's hot. But instead of like American Raku, where we'll go into a reduction bucket and we'll smoke it and we'll do things like that to it. Instead, this, I'll pull it out of here and it's gonna go into a bucket of a flour, yeast, sugar, and water mixture. Now this mixture, I make it up about three days ahead of time. So you have to you have to let it set for about three days. It lets the yeast work, changes the chemistry of the, the mixture a little bit. And after about three days, it's ready to use. You'll pull the pot out of here, red hot. It'll go into the mixture, and when you come back out of the mixture, it'll start scalding and burning. Kind of happens quick, so you have to kind of react to it. And then when you get something that you kind of like, then you go ahead and go into the water. Uh, there's about a 200 degree working area here on this. Now, the Alvaro fire, we go up to 1650, where Raku, we go to 1850. But there's about 200 degrees where this works. If it gets too hot, it just doesn't, it just doesn't sizzle in, doesn't burn in right. It just kind of, it'll do a white coating and that'll be it. If it's too low, it kind of turns into a slimy mess. I mean, it really does. Uh, now, they used it for cooking utensils uh, in the 12th century, but I, I wouldn't advise that today. It's more of a, we're using it more for a decorative uh, type of uh, form right now. Again, here's the mixture again. If you kind of look at the mixture, you'll see it looks just kind of like water or milk. And you have to keep stirring it up when you use it. You pretty much need to stir it up constantly because it settles out pretty quick. All right, well, that's a, a little bit of the history of Alvara. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some pots out of here. It's kind of fast, so I'm just going to kind of go, and then we'll set them over here, and then when we're done, we'll take a moment to look at them. Okay? All right. Dunking. Usually the, the hotter the piece, it'll do more of that black and white. And as they cool off, they'll start doing more browns. Like that. It's kind of quick. It happens quick. If you, you pull it out too far, it'll burn all black. Where there I got a little bit of browns on that one. Okay, I need to do the, this is the lid for the first one. This is the lid for the second one. More brown, trying to get more of a brown color, not bad. It's kind of hard sometimes to get your lid to match. But it's just, it's, there's a certain rhythm to it, and you just need to do a bunch of them to get the feel of it. Now you can see the pots are starting to cool off. We're getting more of the browns. This last one will probably go real pale brown. It's not going to... Well, come on, baby. Burn, burn, baby, burn. I've heard that somewhere before. Where was that? Well, that was back in the 60s. 
Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay, like I said on the very first ones, the hotter the pot, you'll get that white and black. It's very dramatic. It's very popular too, actually, as, as a color. See the patterns you can kind of get on it. Actually, what's interesting is actually the hottest spot actually does the white. And if it's too hot, it'll just do this white all over and it won't burn in the mixture. And then as it cools off certain areas, it'll cool off a little bit. It's a lot about the thickness of the clay. There's the lid for it, which kind of matches. Not too bad. Now the next one we did there, you can tell the pot was cooling a little bit. We still got a little bit of the black and white on the bottom because our bottoms are always thicker. There's always more mass there, but look at the patterns. We got a little bit of that golden brown in there. Really, this is really a good, a good piece. I really like because it has a range of colors to it. And then as it cools down, you really start getting a lot more of a real soft brown. Like I said, And then this one is not too bad too. It kind of, these three here all kind of come out in the same brown range. Now what I'll do is I'll, uh, one of these jars, I believe it's going to be that one, this jar here, I'm going to put a stick on top and I'm going to put this up for sale on the Artfest online shop. And then also I have a bowl here that I did earlier that uh, I'll be putting up on the online sale. Now the bowls are really interesting and because you have such a wide flat area, it really lets the pattern just really pop out, really make some interesting patterns. Like I say, there's a certain amount of a feel to this. So you just have to do it. You just gotta let it happen. And the more you, you, you practice with it, you'll get a feeling to it. If you bought, you wait too long, boy, you're sitting here and you're watching it. And, hey, I really like that color, but by the time you get from the mixture over to the water, it's, it's completely changed. You almost have to anticipate what's going to happen. All right, well, that's that's my short little video. I hope you all enjoy the uh, Art Fest uh, videos that are all on, online here. It's the first time we've done an online Art Fest, which is a shame, but, but that's what we got to do right now. And like I say, this, this one... And this one I'll be putting up on the online shop. So I hope you go over there and, and buy it. And all the money will go towards the art center. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the art fest.